Islam, Dwayne Byfield Bay. It is um, June the 3rd. It's Sunday. Islam, um, I don't know if you heard me. Dwayne Byfield Bay is June the 3rd. It's Sunday. Um, it's going on 4 p.m. What I'm about to do right now is read uh, June the 3rd, 2018. Um, I'm about to read. Oops. Is this? Oh, this is the torn book. <laughs> um, the Holy Quran Circle 7, Chapter. 24 and 25 okay um it's chapter 24 the obedience of children towards their father from the secrets of allah let man learn wisdom and apply to himself the instructions they give Go to the desert, my son. Observe the young stork of the wilderness. Let him speak to thy heart. He breathe, he beareth on his wings, his age sire. He lodge him in safety and supply him with food the piety of a child is sweeter than the incense of Persia offering to the Sun yea more delicious than odors wrath from a field of Arabian spices of the worst in gales. Be, be grateful to thy father, for he gave thee life, and to thy mother, for she sustained thee. Hear the words of his mouth, for thy are spoken for thy good. Give ear to his admonition, for it proceed from love. He have watched for thy welfare, he have toiled for thy ease. Do honor, therefore, to his age. And let not his gray hairs be treated with irreverence. Forget not thy helpless infancy, nor the forwardness of thy youth, and indulge the infirmities of thy aged parents. Assist and support them in the decline of life so shall their hoary heads go down to the grave in peace and thine own children in reverence of thy example shall repay thy piety with filial love okay all right that is um Chapter 24 of the Holy Quran, Circle 7. Now I'm, I'm going to read Chapter 25. The Holy Covenant of the Asiatic Nation. Ye are the children of one father, provided for by his care, and the breast of one mother hath given you suck. Let the bonds of affection, therefore, unite thee with thy brothers, that peace and happiness may dwell in thy father's house. And when ye separate in the world, remember the relation that binds you to love, 
and unity. Prefer not a stranger before thy own blood. If thy brother is in adversity, assist him. If thy sister is in trouble, forsake her not. So shall the fortunes of thy father contribute to the support of his whole race and his care be continued to you all in your love to each other islam so that's chapter um 24 and 25. now i am about to read um Moorish literature. What is Islam? By Noble Ali, the Prophet. What is Islam? This is um, Dwayne Bafabay. I, I really like this um this um um chapter in this book. Islam is a very simple faith. It requires man to recognize his duties toward God, Allah, his creator, and his fellow creatures. It teaches the supreme duty of living at peace with one's surrounding. It is preeminently the religion of peace. The very name Islam means peace. The goal of a man's life, according to Islam, is peace with everything. Peace with Allah and peace with man. The Quran, the holy book of Islam, tells us that the final abode of man is the house of peace where no vain word or sinful discourse will be heard the holy divine prophet Nobuju Ali says that a follower of Islam in the true sense of the word is one whose hands tongue and thoughts do not hurt others. Object of man's life, according to Islam, is its complete unfoldment. Islam teaches that man is born with unlimited capacities for progress. Islam does not support the idea that man was born in sin. It teaches that everyone has within him the seed of perfect development and it rests solely with himself to make or mar his, his fortune. The cardinal, the cardinal doctrine of Islam is the unity of the Father, Allah. We believe in one God, Allah, who is all God, all mercy, and all powerful, all power. All God, all mercy, all power. He is perfect and holy, all wisdom all knowledge, and all truth. These are some of, the, of his great attributes so far as we can understand. 
I'm going to read that again. The carnal doctrine of Islam is the unity of the Father, Allah. We believe in one God, Allah, who is all God, all mercy, and all power. He is perfect and holy. All wisdom, all knowledge, and all truth. These are some of the great attributes so far as we can understand. He is free from all defects, holy and transcendent. He is personal to us and so far as we see his attributes working for us and in us. But he is nevertheless impersonal because he is infinite, perfect, and holy. We do not believe that death, decay, or sleep overtake him. Neither do we believe that he is a helplessly and active and an earth force. Nothing happens without his knowledge and will. He neither begets nor is he begotten. Because these are traits of frail and weak humanity. The unity of Allah is the first and foremost pillar of Islam and every other belief hangs upon it Islam that's what is Islam by prophet no by Noble Drawley the prophet Moorish literature I'm going to read the Hebrew law that was in the Senate, March 31st, 1864. The Hebrew law was, um, um, I learned through Moorish American National Republic, that it was uh, in the Senate. March 31st of 1864. And it starts off by this. This is the transcript. It says, said he slavery had existed under some form or or other from the first period of recorded history it dates back even beyond the period of abraham the father of the faithful and whose seed all the nations of the earth were to be blessed we find that immediately after the flood the Almighty, for purposes inscrutable to us, condemned a whole race to servitude. The more or known effect of 14, I can't, um, I'm not pronouncing this word right. I think it's Latin. And he said, curse he canon, slave of slaves. He shall be to his brethren. It was continued among all people until the advent of the Christian era. It was recognized in the new dispensation, which was to supersede the old. It has the sanction of God's own apostle. For when Paul sent back Anisimus to Phil Philmon, whom did he send? A free man. No, sir. He sent. No, he said. Who did he send? A free man? It has a question mark. No, sir. He sent. Duelist. A slave. Born as such. 
not even his Adrop Adropodon, which I'm pretty sure I'm pronouncing this name wrong, this word wrong, who was such by captivity in war among all people and in all ages has the institution if such it is to be called existed and had the continence of wise and good men and even of the christian church itself until these modern times up at least to the 19th century it exists in this country and has existed from the beginning okay this was um, a statement from Salisbury okay and once again this is the Hebrew law that was in the Senate March the 31st 1864 so mr. Holland's reply to the position of mr. Salisbury that slavery is right is a divine institution etc this this is um, mr. Holland's reply was very able and interesting he piled up okay it's saying um, when mr. Holland replied he piled up authority after authority English as well as American to show that there is not support of slavery and especially of the title to services of the adult offspring of a slave common law and after also proven by the mouth of a favorite son of Virginia that it has not legal existence by virtue of any municipal or statutory law he declared that the only remaining law that can be cited for its support is the Levitical Code as follows both the bondman and the bondsman which thou shalt have shall be of the brethren that are round about you and them shall ye by bondmen and bondmaids and this is um, Le Leviticus 25:10. Um, moreover, of the children, and this is in the Holy Bible, in Leviticus, the book of Leviticus. Moreover, of the children of the strangers that do sojourn among you, of them shall ye buy, and in the end of their families that are with you, which they beget in your land. And they shall be your possession. And ye shall take them as an inheritance for your children after you to inherit them for a possession. They shall be your bondmen forever. I remark, said he, in this connection that the Levitical Code or the Hebrew Law contains a provision for naturalization of foreigners whether captives of war or voluntary immigrants by compliance with the requirements of this law they become citizens entitled to all the rights and privileges and immunities of nature he hebrews the hebrew slave code applicable to enslaved hebrews is in these words and if thy brother and hebrew man or a hebrew woman be sold unto thee and serve thee six years then in the seventh year thou shalt let him go free from thee islam i have to back up one moment
Okay, I said that wrong. I said um, at the beginning of um, maybe three paragraphs up when it states um, um, in this transcript, I stated something wrong. It says, by both the bondman and thy bondsmaid, which thou shall have, um, with which thou shall have, shall be of the brethren there that are round about you. Of them shall ye buy bondmen and bondmaids. Um, I'm going to read um, Leviticus 25:10 right now, the way by Phil Bay, uh, from the Holy Bible. Okay, it states. And ye shall hallow the fiftieth year and proclaim liberty throughout all the land unto all the inhabitants thereof. It shall be a jubilee unto you, and ye shall return every man unto his possession, and ye shall return every man unto his family. Islam. Okay. Okay, and this is Deuteronomy chapter 15, starting with verse 12 in reference to the Hebrew law. Deuteronomy of the Holy Bible, chapter 15, starting with verse 12, it says, And if thy brother, a Hebrew man, or a Hebrew woman, be sold unto thee, and serve thee six years, then in the seventh year thou shalt let him go free from thee. And when thou sendest him out free from thee, thou shalt not let him go away empty. Thou shalt furnish him liberally out of thy flock and out of thy floor and out of thy winepress of that wherewith the Lord thy God hath blessed thee. Thou shalt give unto him. And thou shalt remember that thou wast a bondman in the land of Egypt, and the Lord thy God redeemed thee. Therefore I command thee these, this thing today. And it shall be, if he say unto thee, I will not go away from thee, because he loved thee and thy house, because he is well with thee, then thou shalt take an awl and thrust it through his ear unto the door, and he shall be thy servant forever, and also unto thy maid servant thou shalt do likewise. It shall not seem hard unto thee when thou sendst him away from thee, for he hath been worth a double hired servant to thee in serving thee six years and the Lord thy God shall bless thee in all that thou do does okay so that's um, the Hebrew law so I just read um, Dwayne Baffield Bay um, 2510 of um, Leviticus um, um, also and that is on um, the Liberty Bell in Philadelphia okay um, also, I read um, the Hebrew law, um, which um, is in Deuteronomy chapter 15, starting with verse 12, all the way to um, verse 18. Now I'm going to return back, it's in 24 minutes, back to um, the Hebrew law being in the Senate, March the 31st, 1864. So um, it says, I remarked, said he, and this is um, 
um Mr. Halls replying to Salisbury um Salisbury um argument that slavery is um legitimate, okay? Or um is needed, I guess you want to say. I remark, he said, in the connection that the Levitical Code or the Hebrew Law contains a provision for naturalization of foreigners, whether captives of war or voluntary immigrants, by compliance. With the requirements of this law, they become citizens, entitled to all rights and privileges, privileges and immunities of nature Hebrews. Hebrews. The Hebrew Slave Code, after to enslave Hebrews is in these words and if thy brother a Hebrew man or a Hebrew woman Hebrew woman be sold unto thee and serve thee six years then in the seventh year thou shalt let him go free from thee here I request the attention to those this is once again um, Mr. Halls speaking here I request to request the attention of those who claim compensation for emancipated slaves to the text and when thou sentst him out free from thee thou shalt not let him go away empty thou shalt furnish him liberally out of thy flock and out of thy floor which means granaries and out of thy wine press and out and it says of that wherewith the lord that god hath blessed thee thou shalt give unto him it should not seem hard unto thee when thou sentst him away free from thee, for he hath been worth a double hired servant to thee in serving the six years. The Hebrew statutes provide that the heathen might be purchased and held as slaves, and their posterity after them. That under the under their naturalization laws, all strangers and sojourners, bond and free, have the privilege of acquiring the rights of citizenship. That all Hebrews, natives or naturalized, might accept and maintain their right to freedom. At the end of six years, a Hebrew slave thus demanding his liberty, was not to be sent away empty. The owner, so far from claiming compensation from his neighbors or from the public treasury for setting him free, was bound to divide with the freedman of his own possession, to give him of his flocks, of his herds, of his granary, and of his winepress, of everything with which the Lord Almighty had blessed the master during the years of his servitude. And then the owner was admonished that he was not to regard it as a hardship to be recognized to liberate the slave and to divide with him of his substance. The Almighty places the liberated slaves claim to a division of his former master pro, master's property on the external principles of justice the duty to render an equivalent for an equivalent the slave having served six years must be paid for his service must be paid liberally because he had been worth even more than and hired servant during the period of his enslavement. If then continued, Mr. Holland, this is Mr. Holland continuing, the justice of this claim cannot be found either in reason, natural justice, or the principles of the common law, or in any positive municipal or statute regulation of any state or in the Hebrew code written by the finger of God protruded from the flame of fire on the summit of Sinai I ask whence the origin of the title 
to the service of the adult offspring of the slave mother? Or is it not manifest that there is no just title? Is it not a mere usurpation without any known mode of justification under any existing code of laws, human or divine? And this is once again the Hebrew law that was in the Senate, March the 31st, 1864, Islam. All right, it's 30 minutes in this um, reading. That's my reading for today as of now, right now. And it's, Imani, Imani what time is it? Imani, huh? what time is it? It's um, 3.55. 3.55 p.m. Have a time your thing, right? no, not when I'm doing a recording. Um, and it is um, June the 3rd, 2018. It's all.